वेलकम ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट टी ई एम मोड फॉर पैरल प्लेट वेव गाइड दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द पैरल प्लेट वेव गाइड डेट वी डिस्कस्ड इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर सो अ पैरल प्लेट वेव गाइड कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ टू प्लेट्स वन इज रिप्रेजेंटेड एज टॉप प्लेट एंड अनादर वन एज बॉटम प्लेट दीज टू प्लेट्स आर बींग पैरल टू ईच अदर एंड ऑल्सो बींग सेपरेटेड बाय द डिस्टेंस दैट इज इक्वल टू डी ओनली The width of these both plates is equals to W, and the bottom plate is being placed at y equals to zero, and the top plate is placed at y equals to d. These two plates are also being separated by the dielectric material at the distance t. Now let us have a look at this TEM mode. So the TEM mode represents transverse electromagnetic mode in which the wave guide having the wave propagates now the holmors equation in the potential form for the tem mode is given as del t square into phi of xy which is being equals to 0 only and here the range of x lies between 0 to w where this w is nothing but the width of this parallel plates and if we talk about the range of y then the value of y ranges from 0 to d where d is nothing but distance between these two parallel plates now let us have a look at some boundary conditions that are associated with parallel plate wave guide so here the bottom plate is applied at zero potential and if we write this zero potential form in this equation then phi of x and in place of y we will simply put y equals to 0 here so phi of x comma 0 will be equals to 0 only because it is being applied at zero potential now let us have a look at this top plate since the top plate is at y equals to d that's why we will substitute this y equals to d in this equation so it will become phi of x comma d and since it is applied at positive potential that's why it is being equals to v not where this v not is nothing but the potential for top parallel plate so this is the general introduction about the parallel plate wave guide and its boundary conditions now the one most important thing that we all have to notice that here on the y axis the value of y varies from 0 to d but if we talk about the x axis then there is no variation of the values on the x axis that's why if we write the general equation for this helmholtz equation then we can write it as phi of x comma y will become a plus b y we have only included y which varies from 0 to d and x is being constant that's why we have no x component here now we will apply this two boundary condition that is equation number 2 and 3 in this equation that is our general solution so here is the solution of the equation that is phi of xy equals to a plus by let me give it as equation number 4 now let us apply some boundary condition that we discussed applying boundary conditions so we have apply the first boundary condition that is at y equals to 0 since our equation is phi of xy that is being equals to a plus by on applying the first boundary condition that is phi of x comma 0 that is being equals to 0 so 
we will write this i of x comma 0 that is being equals to a plus in place of y we will simply write 0 here so b of 0 so this phi of x comma 0 will become a only and since we know that phi of x 0 is 0 only so in place of phi x 0 we will write 0 only so we can say that the value of a is nothing but equals to 0 this is our equation number 5 now let us apply the boundary condition second that is we know that phi of x y is equals to a plus b y and according to the boundary condition second we know that phi of x comma d which is being equal to positive potential v naught so phi of x comma d will be equal to a plus b and in place of y we will write d only since we know that phi of x comma d is equal to v naught so we write v naught equals to and in place of a we write 0 only 0 plus b d so the value of b from here will become v naught over d so this is the expression for the value of b let me give it as equation number 6 If we write the general solution for this equation by substituting the value of a and b in this equation then the solution will become phi of xy that is being equal to in place of a we write 0 and in place of b we write v naught by d into y here on simplifying it will become phi of x comma y that is being equal to v naught over d into y this is the equation or the general solution now let us have a look at some transverse electric field which are perpendicular to the direction of propagation so transverse electric field is given as e of x y which is being equals to minus of del t into phi of x y and since we know that phi of x y is equal to v naught by d so the transverse electric field e of x y will become minus of v naught by d and here is an another component that is unit vector which shows the direction in y axis and since the direction of the y have a variation that's why we can say that our electric field also varies in y direction now let us have a look at some total electric field equation so total electric field is given as e of x y z that is being equals to e of x y into e to the power minus j k z here e x y is nothing but transverse electric field and e to the power minus j k z represents our wave is propagating in 
z direction only on substituting the value we get the expression of total electric field which become e of x y z equals to minus v naught by d into e to the power minus j k z into a y cap so this is the final expression for total electric field since we discussed the expression for total electric field that's why the total magnetic field also being given as h x y and z and it is equals to 1 over nita a z cap having the cross product with electric field that is total electric field this component having z direction because here is a z cap and since we know that our electric field varies in y direction only so this have a component which varies in y direction only on substituting the value of e of x y z we get 1 over nita e z cap having the cross product with minus v naught by d e to the power minus j k z into a y cap rewriting the whole equation we get 1 over nita multiplied with minus v naught over d e to the power minus j k z and this a z cap having the cross product with a y cap since from the cross product identity we know that a z cap being cross product with a y cap gives minus of a x cap as a result so substituting minus a x cap in place of a z cap multiplied with a y cap we get the final magnetic field as v naught over nita d e to the power minus j k z into a x cap so this is our total magnetic field and here this nita is nothing but intrinsic impedance and the expression for the intrinsic impedance is equals to under the root mu over epsilon so till now we have discussed the general solution for helmholtz equation for the wave propagation in tem mode and the total electric field ex expression and the total magnetic field expression now for the tem mode to occur the component of electric field in the z direction that is ez is equals to 0 and the component of magnetic field in the z direction that is hz is also been equals to 0 this is the basic condition for the tem mode to occur now let us have a look at some parameters that are associated with tem mode so our first parameter is voltage on the top plate so the voltage on the top parallel plate is given as integration from y equals to 0 to y equals to d ey dy because the variation of electric field only occurs in the y direction that's why we have taken the y component only and on evaluating this expression we get the voltage on the top plate as v naught e to the power minus 
j k z now let us have a look at some par second parameter that is current on the top plate so the expression for the calculation of current is given as integration from x to 0 that is x to w j s a z cap d x because the width varies from x equals to 0 to x equals to w only on the x axis and on putting the values we get cross product of minus a y cap and magnetic field it can also be represented as x equals to 0 to x equals to w hx dx so here is a component and the final expression for the current is given as after evaluation of this integration we get w v naught over neta d e to the power minus j k z so this is the expression for current on the top plate now if we discuss about the characteristic impedance that is our third parameter then the characteristic impedance z naught is given as the ratio of voltage to the current and if we substitute the values that is voltage and the current in this equation we get the final output as neta d over w only this is our characteristic impedance and if we discuss about the phase velocity that is our fourth parameter that is being denoted by v of p then it will be given as omega over beta or we can say that 1 over under the root mu epsilon so this is all about the TEM mode for parallel plate waveguide and its four parameters if you like my videos then do subscribe my channel and please hit the like button thank you